Bar charts are useful for visualizing categorical data, groups comparisons, and effective data communication through bar labels. In this video, we'll learn the secrets of producing visually stunning bar charts using the ggplot2 package. To start, we need to load the tidyverse meta package since it includes ggplot2 and other valuable packages. We'll also need some data, such as the wage dataset from the ISLR package. Typical raw data often involves cases that haven't been counted yet. Fortunately, manual counting isn't necessary, as counting is inherently integrated into the default functionality of the GeoMBAR function. To create our first bar chart using the ggplot2 function, we'll only need to specify three elements. The data frame, aesthetics including the categorical variable education on the x-axis, and the geombar function with the stat count argument. Explicitly specifying stat count is unnecessary though, since it's the default behavior. In these illustrations, the bar heights signifies the case count for each educational level. However, when dealing with preprocessed or summarized data where counts are already categorized, we can utilize stat identity within the geombar function. The aesthetics will now encompass not only the x-axis with the categorical variable, but also the y-axis with readily available counts. The stat identity argument helps to identify which counts correspond to which categories. With this straightforward example in hand, let's discover how we can significantly enhance the visual appeal of our plot. First of all, we can effortlessly adjust the width of our gray bars by employing the width argument, setting it, for example, to 0.4. But gray bars appeal rather dull. Thus, to reduce the monotony, we can inject some colors into our chart. For example, by using the fill argument inside of Geom bar, we can paint the bars white, while utilizing the color argument to give the edges a chocolate shade. But if, for whatever reason, we want different colors for different bars, we can put the fill and color arguments inside of aesthetics to make it aesthetically more appealing. By the way, we can save our plot as an object which not only reduces the need for excessive typing, but also enables us to employ this object for subsequent manipulations. For example, we can manually fill the bars with the color of our choice or apply custom color palettes to our object. But, to be honest, I'll never use them. Instead, I absolutely love and use the minimalistic gray scaled bars in varying appealing shades of gray. However, what is totally not appealing is this blunt gray background. Fortunately, there is a straightforward solution for it – the use of themes. Themes allow us to change the plot's design with a single command. Here are examples of minimalistic or classic themes. However, by typing themes underscore and pressing the tap button, you'll be presented with multiple themes allowing you to quickly find your personal favorite. Cool, isn't it? But you know what's even cooler? The fact that we can easily add labels to our bars. Everyone appreciates labels, right? We achieve this using the geom text function and telling our plot aesthetics from which column we want to extract our labels. While labels are indeed useful, the placement of our text is rather peculiar neither on the bar nor under the bar. Additionally, they are somewhat small and challenging to discern due to their black color. Therefore, it's necessary to enlarge their size, vertically adjust them, and make their color more visible. But wait, there is more. We can actually determine the labels themselves by simply writing them down, and you won't believe this, we can make those labels bold. And when vertical positioning just won't fit all that amazing text, we can use a few tricks to bring our plot to another level. 
First, we can effortlessly flip the entire plot using the coordinates flip function. Then, we'll horizontally adjust our text, ensuring it fits right near the bars. We'll then extend the x-axis to 45 to make sure every bit of text is displayed. And finally, we can even change the order of our discrete categories for a smoother, more reader-friendly flow with the scaleX discrete function. Now that our main plot is in good shape, Let's consider the legend. Well, handling the legend can be pain in the ass, but no worries, you are in control here. With the theme function and the legend position argument, you can adjust the legend's placement, top, bottom, or no legend at all. Plus, if you need to, you can change the legend's name and labels to whatever you want. And while we can actually control everything in the legend, yes, we can. Most of the time we don't need to, but what we consistently need is the ability to control titles, captions, and access. Let me introduce you to just two commands that let you achieve exactly that. The lapse command controls what we see, and the theme command controls how different text elements look like. Ok, let's summarize what we've learned so far. The first final plot might appear as a huge chunk of code, but it's surprisingly intuitive when broken down step by step. For instance, with counts for three categories in our data frame, we can fill the bars with different colors and vary the width of the bars, apply shades of gray for a consistent appearance, alter the legend's name, labels, and order, Enhance the plot's overall visual appeal by using different themes, sort the bars and attach custom labels to them, rotate the plot 90 degrees and adjust the x-axis length, revise the legend's position or even remove the legend, introduce titles, captions and new access names, and finally, modify the size and color of titles, captions and access even go in bold or italic if needed. And before we lose all these changes, we can save this plot in the format of our choice using gg save command. While this stunning bar plot featuring just one categorical variable looks gorgeous, let's get real. Most of the time, we are dealing with many categorical variables that need plotting. We might need to stack them, align them side by side, or even fit them into multiple subplots. So let's get a more realistic dataset with four categorical variables, each having multiple levels, and plot the hell out of them, starting with stacked bar plots. In general, the code remains quite similar, yet it carries two fresh nuances. Firstly, instead of filling the bars along the x-axis, as we did before, we are now filling a different categorical variable with color. Secondly, we can command the geombar function to neatly stack the bars we've just filled via the position stack argument. However, the arrangement seems a bit dodgy, doesn't it? The problem is it hampers our ability to make effective comparisons of survived versus not survived people on Titanic. What we truly want is to have the bars grouped near each other for a clearer contrast. So we need to change this dodgy positioning for a position dodge, no pun intended. But wait, there is more. We can take it a step further and employ the facet grid function to incorporate two additional categorical variables such as age and sex. We can attach labels to dodge bar plots and elevate the plot's aesthetics by implementing a fresh colors and a new theme. Not bad for just few lines of code, right? While I generally love bar plots, there is one type I genuinely dislike. Bar plots with error bars, commonly seen in scientific papers. My reservations arise because these bars usually depict average values along with their 95% confidence intervals. Two reasons fuel my disapproval. First, bars are designed to represent counts rather than averages. And secondly, if we are presenting averages as points with confidence intervals anyway, 
including bars seem superfluous, contributing very little beyond the information conveyed by the average points already. With that being said, if you are still inclined to create such plots, the simplest approach, in my opinion, involves using the stat summary function with three distinct geoms, columns, points, and arrow bars. Through this method, you can calculate 95% confidence intervals either in a normal or in bootstrapped manner. Now, let's get back to real bar plots and make them great again. Another intuitive approach to enhance the somewhat lacking information in the stacked bars is to ensure each bar group reaches 100%, don't you think? Well, accomplishing that is very easy with the scale y continuous function and the percent option from the scales package. However, while the percentages on the y axis appear impressive, Having the actual percentage of each category displayed as text within each bar would be far more effective, right? To achieve this, we'll weight our frequency and instead of relying on the identity statistics within Geom bar, we'll explicitly opt for the proportion statistics within Geom text. And by employing the position fill function with 0.5 specified within, our text would be perfectly positioned at the exact center of each category. This plot illustrates that 5.5% of all passengers belonged to the first class and did not survive. While this representation might be what we want, I more often want each class to be 100% for a clear comparison of survival within each class. This can be achieved by using the by argument inside of aesthetics, where by argument need to have identical variable to one on the x-axis. Now we observe that the survival rate of the rich is the highest at 62.5%, whereas the crew exhibited the highest sacrifice rate of 76% amongst all classes. By the way, after weighting our frequencies, we gain the flexibility to create as many groups as needed. For example, let's consider the sex factor. Interestingly, a majority of men did not survive, whereas the majority of women did. Moreover, it's evident that during that period, a person's chances of survival were positively linked to their social status. The wealthier one was, the significantly greater their chances of survival were. Not everyone will make it, but if you have made it so far in this video, please consider liking it. And if you are genuinely interested in determining the real statistical significance and wish to add some informative statistics to your visualization, you can conduct a quick chi-square test for both males and females by utilizing the ggstats plot package. However, since I've already produced an extra video covering the interpretation of similar chi-square tests, I won't elaborate on these numbers here. Instead, I'll display a link to this video on the screen for your convenience.